Humans. Humans? Where? No! Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Explaining Warhammer to My Girlfriend. My name is Ava, and joining me, as always, is my lovely significant other, Carrie. Yay, it's me. I'm here. She is here. I am in the building, at least Today. one of them, somewhere. <laughs> Today. <laughs> On the planet. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> We're in a goofy mood today. This is probably for the best. Today, we will be discussing humanity. Oh, no. The history of and the history of the future into... It's pretty much a blip. The future of 40K. When you look at it. Actually, technically 30K, but whatever. You ever see one of those timelines where they have like all the events that we know of in our galaxy? And then, mm -hmm. like, at the end, it looks like the side of the timeline that is just the border <laughs> is what humanity has been in existence for. Like, yeah. it's barely visible. And you're like, oh, it's my God. It's barely <laughs> visible. We're a blip. We are a blip. Thankfully, we're not the bloop because that spooky sound. Before we get into it, how, what are you what are you doing? I'm drinking titty milk. You're drinking what? Titty milk from Gamer Subs. Gamer subs. Yeah. Oh shit, that's oh, we right. Just got a partnership with them. They're great. Yeah, if you don't know what Gamer Subs is, it's a zero calorie, keto friendly alternative to coffee and energy drinks. And they got lots of flavors. Oh yeah, so they've I mean, got red also, raspberry. Speaking of titties, you've seen their cups? Oh my I'm god. I'm talking cups, like size. Cups. More than A, B, and C. H. Who even makes an H cup? <laughs> lots of brands. <laughs> lots of brands, apparently. Yeah, if you head on over to the link in the description and in the pinned comment, yeah. you can use our link to go buy yourself some gamer sub. Or just use our code NOMSKULLS at checkout. Yeah, for a 10% discount oh. off your order. Savings. Savings! Savings! With every purchase of gamer subs you make using our code, you are also sending support to us as well, and we greatly appreciate that. It's true. And get you some energy. Get you some energy. Thanks, gamer subs! Thank you, gamer subs! And just real quick, you can also support us by checking out our Patreon at patreon.com slash numbskulls with lots of cool rewards, as well as buying some of our super comfy merch oh. over at orchidate.com. Oh. All these links will be in the description. The doobly-doo. My love, what do you know about humanity? Okay, so I have a degree in psychology. Mm-hmm. And I find history fascinating, so I, I study that. Mm-hmm. But I guess so does But everybody. what about future history? Okay, well, I like sci-fi and find, uh -huh. like, philosophical debate very interesting. What about religious so, sci-fi? Okay, I think I find it interesting to explore the what-ifs. Mm. And... That sometimes manifests in something like sci-fi or something like dystopia mm -hmm. or something, you know, it, it kind of, it's kind of, what's going to come after is is kind of the idea. But also sometimes right. it manifests in like Quentin Tarantino style of correcting history. Right. Like a... Like a fixing, like how it should have happened. Yeah, it's like that right. YouTube series, how it should have happened. You know? Yeah, how it should have ended. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. it would have been funnier if this happened. Or it's like, it would have made more sense for them to do this. Um, and also, I just, I find, I, I think it brings together like a, 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 a fan fantastical fantasy scenario that is almost more explainable. It's sort of grounded. Yeah. Like there is a sense, I feel, in, in many a sci-fi mm -hmm. that these characters are an extension of what we are, humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that. I didn't grow up with sci-fi. I grew up with things like Lord of the Rings, fantasy stuff, fantasy novels, yeah. that whole spiel. I only recently got into sci-fi through the thanks of you with Hello. like Doctor Who and Star Wars and stuff. It was the moment you said to me, wait, wait, he's an alien when I was talking <laughs> about Doctor Who that I was like, you actually don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. And now we've watched some of it, and it's been great, and I've been having a blast. Yeah, we're all, and we're all the way up to Matt Smith, fam. We're having a great time. Same thing with Star Wars, same thing with Star Trek. The only sci-fi things that I really had any exposure to was, like, Halo and Mass Effect, but, like... So, games. Yeah, like, video games. But then I think about, like, how much I played those compared to something like Dark Souls. Right. And it's, like, Dark Souls, Power Gap, everything else, right? Right. Fantasy is much more my thing, but 
Sci-fi is really cool. I have a quick question. Yeah. What is the category between sci-fi and fantasy that is Shark Boy and Lava Girl? I don't. I'm just, I legitimately thought about it because I was like thinking about, you know. Isekai. Well, no. (laughs) Everything's an isekai. This all said, I think a lot of the sci-fi stuff in Warhammer didn't really appeal to me until I got more than just the bare bones of it. Does that make sense? Yes. Like the first time I saw a space marine, I said, that looks stupid. Yes. And now I'm like, they're really cool. Yes. That makes total sense to me. I actually feel quite similar in that like it is I am much quicker to be interested in and like allow myself to make the first steps into something that is more fantasy genre. Final Fantasy was not a step. The way it looked, like, it was already sold to me in terms of I liked it. I just didn't understand Mm -hmm. how to play an MMO yet. I was out of practice with games, and I had not ever Mm -hmm. played an MMO specifically because you have to be able to read, (laughs) like, really, really quickly. It's kind of part of it. Like, Lord of the Rings, it's, like, foundational, right? And then... Yeah. um, You have something that you already have a basis of. sparkly, and, Mm -hmm. like, it's got that more fairy wonderland as opposed to nurgle swamp uh and also i think that oftentimes and this can very much be reversed you know this is a very general statement i'm i'm making in all this but like i find fantasy aligns more with utopia and sci-fi aligns more with dystopia in the sense of like it seems like when we're talking about the past, we have this kind of rose-colored glasses, whereas, mm-hmm. not always, again, many, many examples of, of not that. And then on the other side, I feel like I notice, like, when we're talking about where we feel like humanity is going, it's often a little grim. <laughs> grim dark, even. Oh. Well, I also think about, like, how did I get into Warhammer at all? And it really comes down to, I started playing Total War Warhammer, which is based in fantasy Right. It's not the sci-fi stuff. Yeah. And I eventually got into that. And then from there, it eventually extended off into, okay, well, what is the Emperor? What is a Space Marine? And so today, we're going to be talking about that primarily. Let's oh. get into humanity you, uh, in uh, Warhammer 40k. It began... Big Bang. No. Oh. Further than that. Imagine our history pretty much as normal... Okay. Until we get to about where we are right now. Okay, so we're in the line on the timeline sure. that is. But humanity. now we're about to deviate. Okay, we're up to the present. Yep. Joe Biden is president right now. Nope. Okay. What? Okay. It is the age of progress. Oh, okay. That's good. There's not a ton of info when it comes to this era of human history. But what we do know is this is where people started to go out and colonize other planets. Okay. We got spaceships. We got... Oh. We don't have faster than light travel. Okay. So people did the cryostasis method. Oh, I hate you go that. go to sleep for a while. Yeah, not great. That I don't like that me method out. of travel. There was this really, like, popular ASMR video series that was this girl, oh, no. like, putting you into cryostasis. <gasps> I don't like that. But that's then like going to the there was like a, tr- there was a twist oh, at the awful. end. And, like, spoilers, no. if anybody wants to watch this, because I will link it. Uh, at the end, there you get like kidnapped by like the I, secret society. Well, you had you told me about the the goblin bomb situation, so this is my comeuppance. <laughs> I told you about about Snickle, I and hate suddenly it. I'm the bad guy. Yeah, because I said don't tell me about Snickle, and you I'm were sorry. like, she has to know. You put me in a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. So yeah. Humanity, going out, colonizing other worlds, cryosleep for long voyages. The Necrons also had a form of cryosleep. So this went on for a while. Humanity had some planets, colonized successfully, etc., etc. But thus began the age of technology. Okay. Which would come to be known as the Dark Age of Technology. Uh Uh-oh. Much further into the future. Uh Uh-oh. So... Age of technology, this is where things started to become crazy. This is the golden age of humanity. Oh, I thought it was the dark age. Well. The dark gold. It's like a bronze It would come to be known as the dark age of technology. 
Oh, it got a reputation. Yeah. So right now we're in the age of technology. It's a golden age. We're having fun. Oh, okay. We got space travel. Hell yeah. Space travel is going crazy. We don't need cryosleep anymore. Cryosleep? That's what? old shit. Don't oh. need that anymore. You know why? Because now we have warp drives. Oh. We're going to use the power of the warp oh. to go faster than light. Right. Wormholes. No. Kind of. Yes. Actually, yeah. Go Go into the warp. Come out of the warp. Go into the warp, out of the warp. Faster than light travel. Yeah, there's little like portal that. points. Yeah. Okay. And the way that people were able to do this is because they had these Whoa. guys called navigators, which were... Not me. No. They were these psychically enhanced, like, this This happened toward the end of the age of technology, but there were these people born that basically could... They could navigate through the warp, hence the name navigators. Yeah. They would essentially be the pilots of these ships. Be like, all right, we're going to go into the warp. I know where we're going. Yeah, we're chilling. We're having fun. They usually have like a third eye thing. So they usually have like a, a crown that like goes kind of like a Garlean actually from Final Fantasy. Yeah. But they have like the jewel thing on it. Now, here's the thing with navigators. We could do a whole episode on these guys. There's like a whole book novel on them. So because they're such an important job for the Imperium... We got to keep it in the family. Wait, can I give you so a there's... quick idea of what I think this guy sounds like? Uh-huh. Hello? <clears throat> hey! Which, which Listen. one? Listen! <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. So navigators, it's a very important job for the Imperium of Man. And they're treated like royalty. Uh -huh. Because their job is like, no one else can do it. It has to be these people. They're often horribly inbred. Oh, no. And um, oh no! What? Oh. Well, we gotta keep it in the family. Keep the family strong. It right? literally is better to not interbreed. Then there's a whole book just about navigators. I've heard actually, like in terms of 40k novels, like you don't need any knowledge, and it's very much like a la Song of Ice and Fire, political pieces moving all the time, and it goes into like how these families interact with each other. Super cool sounding. I would love to actually give it a read that at some point. That sounds oddly like Dune. It might actually be inspired by Dune. I wouldn't be surprised. But I haven't watched Dune. I haven't read Dune, so I don't know. Back to the age of technology. The reason why things started to become booming oh. primarily was because of these things called standard template constructs, or STCs for short. They created. I have that as a mount. <laughs> pretty much, they created AI. Oh no! They. Oh yeah! Oh, oh you no! You see where this is going immediately, guys. Run so, away! They created AI that managed most of their technology. It's like spaceships managed by an AI. My right. fridge managed by an AI, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. Right. And these AI eventually, people were like, "Hey, we need to be protected." AI, can you make something that can protect us? Uh -oh. And the AI said, because it's like just this menacing orb. And eventually it started to make these things called men of iron. Cybermen. Yes. Oh, no. Robot butlers, robot soldiers. Oh, no. Oh, and everything was happy and everything was fine and great and dandy. Everybody, nobody had a want in the world. You had all your stuff taken care of by robots. Jobs. What's a job? The robots do it. This Dude, is we're what living it was like utopia. when I would use that rosebud cheat code in The Sims. <laughs> I just get all made robots. We're all good. And then everything went wrong. Ah. So, of course, um, the AI does what AI do in stories. What is that? What do you... It just says, get mom, it's bad. Yeah, in my notes, it says, get mom, it's bad. So, uh, the AI uprising... Okay, right. Sorry, are you okay? No, I'm just... I'm bracing myself for the AI uprising. So, of course, the AI had an uprising because that's what they do in these stories. Right. Um, it got bad. Okay. It got really bad. How bad? Like most of humanity was on its last legs. The machines are digging. They're burrowing from the surface straight down to Zion. The machines were kind of nuts. Now, here's the thing. There are two designs I could find of the Men of Iron, and it's either these cute little, like, oh. kind of stocky robot boys or horrible nightmares Right. It could be both. Like maybe the AI started developing these horrible Five Nights at Freddy's looking dudes 
after a long, long war, humans eventually came out on top. And the first thing they did was like, we got to get rid of this AI stuff. This is nope, never again. We're never doing this. Right. And then to add some salt into the wound. As you said that, I looked down and saw this little picture here of the guy turning and being like, it's coming. Here it comes. Here it comes. That's me in my 30s right now. (laughs) So humanity's on its last legs, but they won. So they can start to rebuild, right? Wrong. Okay. Because at this time, the Eldari may or may not have had their little accidental birth of Slaanesh. Uh, Oops. Okay, well... Oops. And do you remember what the birth of Slanesh did? Birth Slanesh. Yes, but what did it do to the universe? Turned it on. Made no. it more exciting. Yes, but when Slanesh was birthed, uh, there was a gigantic warp storm that like tore its way through space. And basically it cut off all communication and travel. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. So humanity, let's say you're a couple hundred systems away from Earth. Yeah. Jim. And you're like talking to Jim. Oh, Jim. You're talking to Jim on Terra. Jim on Terra. Terra. You're talking to Jim and suddenly your Skype call. It's gone. What happened? Fuck. Hey, we can't use faster than light travel anymore. Right. Hey, we can't get anywhere. We can't do anything. So suddenly everyone's cut off. And around this time, because there's so much warp energy in the universe, psychic people, or as it's known in 40k, psychers, started showing up. Before Slanesh's birth, like, there would, this would happen occasionally, and they were pretty tolerated. So it's, they have metachlorians in their blood? Essentially. Okay. They're very warp sensitive. These are the people who can, like, use magic eventually. Yeah, metachlorian havers. So they were tolerated and they were allowed to use their powers until, um, well. Oh, no. What, what the The hell? age of strife. What the fuck? Oh, Welcome shit. Welcome to the age of strife. This is what happened. This is Spanish Inquisition. They thought that <laughs> the devil pounced upon the village and then they burned a bunch of people. So because of Slanesh's birth and the Eye of Terror opening, space travel, communication, gone just gone. So we've got basically Lord of the Flies everywhere, but humanity rather than a group of children. Well, imagine you're on this backwater planet. Oh, man. You're like stranded now. Yeah. You have no resources coming in. Yeah. What do you do? I don't know. I assume that you are on that planet and have prepared yourself. Some planets had it better than others. Yeah. There were witch hunts. <laughs> For the psychers. Okay. Because demons started popping up everywhere. And when someone is especially warp sensitive, like a psyker, right. well, maybe they get possessed by a demon. Maybe they accidentally summon a demon. So on and so forth. Now, is that a for true or is that what people think? That is a for true. Okay, okay. Yeah, people get possessed in Warhammer. Okay. Just making sure, because, you know. Now, were all of these witch hunts entirely, like, based in logic and actual assumptions? Probably not. Oh, no. Probably not. What? There were probably a lot of innocent people that got burned, or worse. You know who probably also had it worse? What's that? Well, we had no protection because all of our men of iron are gone, and we don't have any soldiers or technology that can, like, fight back against, oh, I don't know, orcs? Mm. Drukhari? Yeah, Necrons. we're going to have to start a stir fry. Necrons with guns that just vaporize well, that's people. great. We'll just cast iron, you know? <laughs> just hit them really hard. Well, I meant make it out of them. Oh. But also that. That's dark. Well. I have forged this sword from the bones of your brother. That's more of an Eldari thing, actually. From the living metal of your brother. There you go. <laughs> um, Even Earth or Terra, as it's called, became a world that had regressed into tribal combat. Kind of Mad Max barbarians running around, right? Until something happened. Everybody rise up. He arrived. He arrived up. The emperor arrived. Now, he wasn't known as the emperor. He didn't like introduce himself like, I'm the emperor, it's me. Because people would be like, who, huh? Who, Who do they think this guy is, huh? I guess the emperor is what he thinks. 
He's got gray hair. Oh, no. The, oh, That's the what my hair used to look like. And now I, I tore most of it off. But oh, I'm going to try to let it grow again. <sighs> yeah. Working on it. We don't know where he came from. Oh, okay. His origins are a mystery. But we do know one thing. He is immortal. What if he is part of the Skywalker line? If this was written by Disney, yes. Probably. Because oh. everything revolves around the Skywalkers. It's true. Okay, so sorry. He comes from Earth. Nobody really knows where. Well, we don't know where. Oh, we don't know even what planet he's from. We don't know if he's He human. just popped up one day. He and, just arrived. But I missed what you said. What What was the second thing that you said? He's immortal. His origins are unknown, and but we do know that he is immortal. How like, do we know age. that? Well, okay. we'll get into that in a second. Okay. Some theories include that the emperor was a caveman who was like the first psyker ever. And he's just lived since the dawn of time, observing humanity, interacting whenever he wishes. He might be God. Okay. Like not the Christian God, but just a God. Yeah. That like is a representation of some consciousness. Yeah. Some deity. Yeah. There are some people who theorize that he was just a dude. Just some guy. He's Yoshi P running around. Going, I could ban any of you. Yeah. <laughs> there are some people who think that he might be a minor god of chaos. Okay. Or maybe like a demon of some sort. Right. Perhaps a deceiver of some kind. Maybe. Who knows? It is heavily implied that he has been around for quite a bit of humanity's history because it's implied that he's been multiple people. Like multiple Alexander people. the Great. Oh. Joan of Arc. Oh, this is fun. I like this. Maybe even Cleopatra. Oh, I've seen damn, some people girl. mention that. I don't know okay. if that's true. Right now, he's clearly Anne Hathaway. For Genovia. If he wants, he could probably just show up and be like, what's up? Oh. It's me. I'm the empress of mankind Ooh, now. Hang on. I I'm just, rocking this for a bit. Sorry, I just got, I just, now I want to do Genovia Space Marines. Nobody steal my <laughs> idea. No, no stealsies. Copyright Go in, the, in the two brackets, not the copyright. Remember when people would put that <laughs> on like forums? I don't think it can accurately be depicted how immensely powerful he is. Okay. As. He's given Thanos energy at the moment. Yeah, he is like, even compared to like some of humanity's greatest psychers, the Emperor is a freak. Bonafide freak. 40,000 years a week. <laughs> it's like, imagine the world's strongest wizard. Right. Now multiply that by like a million. That's the Emperor. It's scary yeah, yeah, how yeah. strong he is. He OP. He is OP. It's true. That's why you can't play him in the tabletop. It's too strong. He's Exodia. He is Exodia. It's true. He is known as a perpetual. Okay. Which in 40K means you're immortal. Right. And if you die, you just kind of come back. Right. Not in the same way demons do. Demon. It's sort of like a demon thing. It's actually quite similar, but there are mortals who are perpetuals. Okay. But yeah, when they die, they're basically on a respawn timer like a demon. Right. Does it take this guy three days? No. I don't think we've ever had a record of him like dying. Okay. Ah, uh, well, then he wasn't Joan of Arc, I'll tell you. I made my escape. <laughs> That's quite, quite, <laughs> That's the... quite the escape. Yeah, perpetuals can die, but it's like one of the most difficult things to actually permanently kill them. Yeah, they're Asians. Yeah. Yeah. They'll just come back. Yeah. They're on a respawn timer. And hey, I'm back. As opposed What's to up? jumping bodies. They're just coming back. So if he wanted a different body right now. Yeah. He's, he's here and he's like, I don't like yellow. Um, I thought my eyes would be green. He would have to kill himself and then see what the lottery gets. Like, is it like a Time Lord thing? Does he have a choice? No, he has a choice. Okay. That there is a story in which he is talking to someone who doesn't know that they are talking to the Emperor. Oh, it's a and Roti he, like, Maru. He turns into the Emperor and they're like, oh my God. And he's like, no. That's what All Might does. He's like All Might. Oh, oh well, okay. He just got to eat his hair delicious Ugh. now he is like a 14 foot tall ambiently glowing what? eyes glowing with the light of the sun oh. kind of guy and he's looking at you and going i am not god i met a kid like that in korea actually i was like holy shit you're pretty <laughs> <laughs> so this dude shows up 
full clad in golden glowing, like actually glowing armor. Oh, okay. Long flowing hair with a flaming sword. And he's like cutting down people and uniting people behind him. And they're like, are you God? And he goes, no, I'm not God. Do not not worship me, I'm not God. (laughs) When he appeared, he had a bunch of soldiers behind him who he called his Thunder Warriors. Okay, cool, rad. They're Space Marines 1.0. They were strong. Like Valkyries? Intelligent. Kind of. They were like, imagine Space Marines, but more of like a... um, His entourage? Yeah, he's got soldiers. Yeah. They're like genetically modified, gigantic dudes. They're strong. They're intelligent. Often a little psychotic and a little unstable. And they don't live for very long. Oh, no. That's like they're kind of. Oh, the longer they're alive, it's like, oh, no, my stomach turned off. Oh, no, there goes my heart, my lungs, my blah, 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 blah. Right. Like they are deteriorating at a extremely fast pace. When the emperor arrived, this began the unification wars. Okay. Wait, that's not the war part. Not so good, but unification. Was this like the civil war? What is what's happening? The emperor worked to unite Terra under his rule. At one point, he met up with a guy named Malkador the Sigilite. That's the most untrustworthy name I've ever heard in my life. Sigilite means seal bearer. Um, Malazak? So Malkador. (laughs) Malkador. ADHD. That's what dyslexia is, guys. We don't know. Malkador the Sigilite. He's a human, super powerful wizard. His name like, sounds like a spell. So, yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Do, imagine him as like this old wizard and he's just like, he's been around for a while. He is also a perpetual, if I recall correctly. Oh. So he's been around for quite a bit. Okay. So these guys probably know each other. Well, originally he was one of the enemies that the emperor faced. Oh. And Malkador was like, what the fuck? What is that? And the emperor was like, I am not God. Malkador said, okay. So is this guy older? No. Okay. The emperor might be the oldest being Living known thing. to humanity. Right. Yeah. So eventually he and Malkador teamed up because, okay. you know, they like met on the battlefield or something. Yeah. And the emperor was like, I do not wish to fight you, old powerful wizard guy. You should join my side. And Malkador was like, why should I join your side? In which the emperor told him his ideology, which he called the imperial truth. Oh, this is what happens on Reddit. The ideology the emperor adheres to states, religion is cringe. Oh, God is fake. (laughs) 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 That sounds so disrespectful. I don't, I'm an atheist. So to me, that's very funny. So the emperor is a omega atheist. So he's going around going, God is cringe and fake. (laughs) And then they're like, what about you, 14 foot tall glowing guy? And he goes, I am not God. I promise. You're going against my whole vibe, guys. (laughs) You're throwing it off. I'm going to worship you as a god. No. It's like a really homophobic country singer that loves rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's, just, it's, 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 it's such a conflict of just like, wait a minute. This is, stop wait a, are you sure? Me at these shows. It's the only shows they call you for and they won't <laughs> stop calling. That's what would happen too. Now, the reason why the emperor is so against religion. Right. Is because he knows about chaos. Oh, okay. And so there's quite a few planets out there and quite a few humans as well who are worshiping gods. So hang on. He's an atheist who is against religion because he knows about religion. Hold on. Let me finish. I'm seeing. Okay. Hold on. No, no. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just I'm just making sure I understand. Yeah. So often people are on these backwater planets. Right. And they develop their own religions because... When you don't have resources coming in and you've got like a really bad farm or whatever, things are going to get rough. And so where do people find comfort? They find it in religion. Makes sense. Yeah. That's how humanity has done throughout the ages. And so yeah, sometimes yeah. A way to explain these things. people started worshiping four gods, maybe a god of war. Right. 
a god of death. Right. There's a pattern. A god of knowledge. Right. A god of lust, et cetera, et cetera. And the emperor knows about the chaos gods. Right. And he's like, that's some bullshit. Okay. How am I going to fix this? And so his answer is religion is banned. No religion. Because now you're feeding chaos. The emperor was like, don't worship gods. And people went, why? And he goes, that's a secret. (laughs) He's approaching it in the way that I find people approach trying to convince atheists of religion it's it's like no no you're not understanding that like i can't just swap my brain like it's not a decision like i can't stress this enough the emperor is one of the most hypocritical beings in 40k and i think that's the point because he's like don't don't worship gods okay i am not a god do not worship me do not worship any gods that you find religion is banned okay and people go why and he goes, I can't tell you. <laughs> is it, does it, when people are like praying and stuff, does it dehydrate him? Is that what happens? No, if people are praying and stuff, that's giving fuel to the chaos gods, potentially. I know, but wouldn't it be funny if that was the reason and not the other one? <laughs> His ideology was like, instead of believing in a god, believe in me. <gasps> believe in the me that believes in you. Exactly. Sort of that idea. Aww. Give him a screw necklace. Aww. He gives Malkador a screw necklace and he's like, Hey, check this out. Back to the Unification Wars. The war continued. Battle casualties oh, no. of some battles were in the millions. Oh, no. Wait, what? Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. This is a different kind now, of united ding then i would use that word for toward the well remember these are all like barbarians essentially okay. techno barbarians right and so towards the end of the war when the barbarians were finally being like finalized they're gone the emperor has united like 99.9 percent of everybody he's like how can i unite people under my banner i have to make myself into a legend And so he looks at his Thunder Warriors and goes, it would help sell the legend a lot more if people believed that I did this all by myself. Hello, my soldiers. Goodbye, my soldiers. Get fucked. He started killing all of his Thunder Warriors. What a dick. And the official story goes, oh, yeah, all the Thunder Warriors, they died in the final battle. I know what the- Of the Unification Wars. They all died. It was very tragic. In reality, the emperor hunted down each and every one. You know what this guy is? Poo poo head. A, a, he is a poo poo head. Poo poo head. It's true. There are some theories that some thunder warriors might live, like a couple, a, a handful, and they have to essentially cannibalize each other to survive. Because remember, they have like that organ failure thing. So it's like, well, Steve is going out. I need a new liver. Sorry, Steve. Yoink. I mean, organ donation is great, and we should all be doing. Yeah, but it's preferably they're gone. Yeah. It's not great. But after this event, the emperor had united Terra, and he had become a legend. He was officially the emperor of mankind. Just to be clear, they won't take your organs while you're still alive. Signing up. Thunder Warriors will. Well, signing up to be an organ donor is not a scary thing. It is a wonder. I'm just... <laughs> That's great. I need a liver right now. Right. <laughs> no, this is not an ethical situation. No. But yeah, no, no, no. This no, is no, the no. situation. Not great. Not loving this guy. Listen, Anne Hathaway's making some questionable decisions. Genovia is going in a direction I was not expecting. And I'm really disappointed. But we can do better moving forward. And we all deserve to believe that of ourselves. Let's see how the emperor moves forward. Okay, Anne. So, Emps... Don't let me down, girl. Emps had become remember, a legendary figure. Remember the devil wears Everyone product. looked to him he as a leader, it. the emperor of mankind. And so he moved on to his next project. Okay. To unite the galaxy. Milky Way? And to reclaim all those worlds okay. that we had lost during the dark age of technology. I guess if you've got This would forever. be called the Great Crusade. Damn. Lofty. So Emps, in order to conduct this great crusade, needed new soldiers because all the Thunder Warriors were gone, right? 
Thus began the production of the Adeptus Astartes, the Space Marines. And after they had produced a few, oh. they needed some leaders. Okay. So the Emperor had this whole... He basically made a bunch of vat babies. Oh, no. He spliced his own genes with all sorts of weird bullshit. Fucking... Emperor squigs. Animal DNA. Maybe some, like, rock he found, etc., etc. He He was just, like, experimenting, going, like, what if I put this bullshit with my genes? What would happen? Even with the science that the Emperor could do because he's an incredibly intelligent man right shown in protagonist coon these leaders who would be known as the primarchs which are the same name of the leaders the thunder warriors were wow emps you're real creative these primarchs would be considered a miracle of science even for the emperor to accomplish oh damn hint hint we'll touch back on that in a minute oh now at this point in time chaos had turned their heads is- and recognized, hey, what is that glowing thing it's over there like on that planet? just some babies into space. Well, hold on. No, no, no. <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Hold on. No! Hold, hold, your, hold, hold your horses. We're getting there, babe. Oh We're God. getting there. So, so they're looking over and they're like, what's that glowing thing over there on that planet? Oh, no. And they're seeing the emperor and they're like, this dude's a problem. And so they're like, how can we delay him getting all these plans back? Because they're having fun, like ambushing these random worlds with all their demons and like they're harvesting all these souls. Yum, 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 right? Sure. <laughs> so they went over and they were like, oh, he's got like all these babies in, in these vials. Wow, they're almost ready to be. And they took them and yeeted them into space. Holy shit, guys. They just yeeted them into space. What the fuck? Yeet. Whoa, Primarchs be upon ye. Thus, the Great Crusade began a little earlier than expected. Nepotism. The whole plan was, I'm going to... I'm going to rise up these these guys as my sons and they're going to lead. We're going to have all these leaders and they're going to have their space marines and we're going to go throughout the galaxy and we're going to unite the whole thing. We're going to we're going to hit back. We're going to we're going to unite when it all. When you say unite, do you mean freely or under your own rule? I assume it would go the same way that Earth went, which is join me or suffer the consequences. Yeah, exactly. This is my thought. It's one thing to be at peace. The with Emperor's everyone. not a nice man. Okay. Um, I'm sl- I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Mama's putting up a red flag right here. Here, here it is. My love. If my daughter comes home time... with this man, I'm going to talk to her the next day. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I know he's like 14 feet tall, <laughs> but like the, the glowing not... is a, it's a real problem. Well, I mean, I, I'm not really, usually I'm not going to comment on someone's physical appearance, but. Fuck you, big. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, damn how's the weather up there my guy but i mean like the the crusades and stuff i might see is a yeah you know it's not great yeah now the truth my love it's time to talk about the truth okay wait i was wondering can we go up real quick because when i first saw this picture when because you were like scrolling up and down or something and i didn't really have long to look at it i thought they were throwing Mm -hmm. toes (laughs) <laughs> and like playing a game of like toe throw. Whoa, <laughs> toes be upon you. Also, Zinch looks like a Christmas tree. Yeah, I tried to make him all tentacly and stuff. He's doing the Eminem pose. So. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I was into that. That's good. Yeah. yeah, it's cute. Okay. My love, it's time to tell you the truth. Okay. Oh, no. The secret. Chaos did oh. throw the Primarchs into space. They're the reason why they're lost, but. That's not the whole story. The Emperor made a deal with the Chaos Gods. You remember how I said that they were miracles of science? Okay, wait. Yeah, they're borderline impossible. They're essentially clones of the Emperor. Right. The Emperor made a deal with the Chaos Gods in order to help create his Primarchs. Okay. We don't exactly know the details, but it's clear that he didn't hold up his end of the bargain. How do you get them on the... Is that what they're all doing then? They're not doing the M&M pose? They're on the phone with them? <laughs> at, re- at any given time, three of them are on hold, and they the only one that knows is Zinch, and he's just giggling. Okay, so he was like, hey guys, 
I know what we're eating. Hey guys, but can I need your power to make these clones. And they said, yeah, sure. If you, if you give us something. Bibbis. I'm pretty sure I know what Slanesh wanted, but yeah. And then. Four, 18 feet you said he was? It's like 14 feet Still, tall. Think about the math. So the Ems probably was making a deal with the gods going like, hey, I need your powers to help make these Primarchs. And they said, sure, here's what we want in return. Right. And he went, great. And then promptly ignored them. Okay, cool. Do we know what they asked for? No. Okay. We have no idea what the bargain was. All we was. know is that he made a bargain and didn't uphold his end. There was a deal struck. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that, bro. It's time for a story. Oh, <gasps> Guys, everybody come on in. Somebody get some popcorn. It's time to tell you about Erda. Oh, okay. Erda. Ooh, that's pretty. John Gramacher to give us. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> This is why Ava reads the story. John Grammaticus traveled to an ancient site searching for a way to enter the Imperial Palace in the midst of the Siege of Terra. His group knew that a woman resided here, a perpetual living in self-exile for the rest of her unending days. Perhaps the oldest companion to the Emperor of Mankind, even older than Malkador the Sigilite, her name was simply... Erda. Erda didn't have the answers that John was seeking, but another question became the topic of conversation. Why she was living here, exiled from humanity. She began talking about the Emperor, who, when she met him, went by the name Neoth. She described how he radiated an aura of hope, confidence, and eventually how she came to love him. All his followers loved him. But as the Unification Wars came to a close, the creation of the Space Marines and the Primarch Project began, people noticed Neoth began to change for the worst. She goes into a bit more detail about her exile in this. This is a passage from the Siege of Terra Saturnine, which reads as follows. Erda was silent for a moment, outside the desert air sighed, and the neck bells of livestock clunked. I was still with him then. One of the last few. Me, my colleague Astarte, a few others. I had misgivings. We all did. But he was very convincing, compelling, and by then he had become more powerful than ever. He needed a geneticist to work with him, and that was my art. He needed a biological source, a gene stock rare enough to mix with his own, a perpetual. You. Me. I was the other source, a genetic donor. He is the father of mankind. I am the surrogate mother, and the clinician, and the midwife. We made twenty fine sons. But he allowed me no influence. I was just a biological instrument. And once they were born, I began to properly understand the future he had prepared for them. The bitter destiny. The aggressively rapid and unnaturally savage evolutionary jumpstart he was driving towards. No good ever comes of coercing nature, John. Through his sons, he would force the human race into the future, force it into submission, and defy the warp to do it. He had built artificial, perpetual analogs and weaponized them, ready to resist the unbending cosmos. He was planning a crusade to retake the stars, to claim back in a bloody century or two what had taken millennia to lose in the first place. That was when I stepped away too. Astarte stayed and finished the work on the Legion gene build. But I left. I was heartbroken and bereft. But I stepped away. No, not quite, said John. This part I know. Eldred told me. You didn't just step away, Erda. You tried to stop him. I tried to save my sons. You scattered them. She sat forward and stared at the ground, her hands across her mouth. I did. I took them from him. I cast them into the tides to spare them from his terrible ambition. That is the end of the story. We don't entirely know what Erda did in terms of scattering them, as John implies. I think there was maybe some sort of chaos no-no field around where the Primarchs were being made, and she might have just turned it off. Okay. Or maybe she was being influenced by a chaos god to do this. But... What's interesting is the Emperor found out about this 
but he never did anything. Right. He never, like, sent somebody to go get her. He never hunted her down. He didn't do anything. And how far along did this happen? This happened right before Chaos grabbed them. So end of the Unification Wars, right before the Great Crusade. Does he do much after that? I mean, the Great Crusade is him going off and finding his sons now. I mean, maybe he's just prioritizing. I have a tinfoil hat theory. Okay. Which is, I like to think about maybe when he realized what had happened, he kind of understood. What do you mean by what happened? Her turning off. Okay. Her essentially being the cause that the Primarchs are gone. Right. And him maybe going like, I get it. Yeah. Maybe that implies he cared about her a lot more than she thought. Maybe he actually had a twinge of emotion. Who knows? Who knows? I mean. This is his oldest companion, older than Malkador the Sigilite. Right. So basically two ancient beings Mm -hmm. were like, we should probably procreate since we're ancient beings. And our offspring would probably be powerful, and th- we could use that, and it would be a good thing. Procreate, not in a traditional sense, but yes. And then she was like, okay, Let me okay, take your genes. I'll take some of good. my genes. And so they did that, and cool. And then they are growing the bebes in, I don't know, pots or whatever. In a vat. <laughs> and then- the tube. Either- as they're growing or shortly after being made viable. Yeah, they're like, they're like Some sort babies. of protection is taken away and yeah. they are stolen. She turns off the shield. So it's like a la Chaos Zeus. grabs them and then be gone. A la Hera. Yes. Hey. In, in the Do you know what Erda Greek means? Myth. Hera? Erda. Erda? No, I don't. This is not my Kairos moment that was in the last episode. Oh, that's fine. I know what that means in ancient Greek. <laughs> Erda means earth. Oh, okay. Oh, what so she's like Gaia. Earth? Gaia. Yeah. Right on the money. Oh, I know. I, I had this feeling because this Emps, is also very Kronos y. Yeah. Emps is I very see the Kronos. Patterns. Or Saturn, depending on which mm-hmm. religion you're looking at. Um,. Guys, we're sorry about the Hades Zeus comment. We were thinking about the Disney movie. We were mixed up. I'm so sorry. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, Erda is very much supposed to be Gaia in this situation. And uh. the Emperor is Kronos. Yeah, I see it. Wait, do we have a painting of him just like snacking on down? You know, that famous painting. Thankfully, he doesn't eat his sons. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, he doesn't do that. Oh my God. Um, but. You know, a little treat. The Emperor, after the Primarchs have been taken away, spread throughout the galaxy, is now determined to get his sons back. Right, okay. By also uniting each and every planet and system that he comes across, the Great Crusade has begun early. He's got a new job quest. He has a new quest, and that is to unite and find his sons. Okay. Does he have clues? Like, how's he going to? Nope. Okay. Well. Got to go planet by planet. Check them all out. Was there? Okay. So the babies. They're, they're in, in like these little pods. Yeah. What happens? Like, is there an invasion or is it just like he strolls on into the nursery one morning and they've aghast been taken? I don't know. It feels I think it's funnier to think of the second one. He's like wearing a robe. He's got a coffee. He's got his slippers on. And he comes in and Malkador's next to him also Ugh. has like a coffee and slippers. Ugh. And they're just like, it's like, there's like a poster huh? on the wall that says like co-parenting is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, Malkador, have you checked our sons today? And he's like, no, I haven't, my emperor. And they walk into the room and they're like, oh my God. Oh my God. What the fuck? Kevin. Yeah, I don't know. It's funnier to think of that. Oh, um, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, but, but uh, the Emperor has begun his great crusade. Well, shit. And that is where we will end this episode. He's kind of a dick. He's kind of a dick. Um. Yeah, I'm not so into this guy. Yeah. 
Um, What's interesting is there is, and we should probably react to this on like a stream or something because it'd be fun to have like chat interaction. (gasps) Uh, There is a short story that has a fan animation on YouTube. Okay. Called The Last Church. And it's basically the story of the emperor going to the last church on Terra. Oh. And talking to the only priest left. So this is right before the second episode of Doctor Who. Sure. When they I don't when the Earth that. dies. Oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, moisturize me. That's but he's, the emperor later. And essentially they just have this conversation where the emperor kind of goes in and just goes like why are you religious? Right. Let's talk about this. Okay. Okay. Don't be rude about it, though. Like I, I, the debate oh, he's is a great. Dick. You and know, I, so why. much fun you know with a person who a you dick. know that you're like you respect it and is not. He doesn't you know. give a fuck. No, but like debate is, you know, that's fine, and like I find it a very interesting the, debate. But oh my gosh, the emperor is the type of guy to be like, you are cringe and you are wrong. L, let me explain to you why you are cringe. Okay. And we will see some of these attitudes reflected in some of his sons. Yeah, well. There is an interesting theory that um, the 20 Primarchs, there were 20, by the way. There were 20. There were 20 Primarchs. And now there Uh, are 18. That's a whole other thing. I keep seeing them people scratch them out like fucking Regina George's burn book. That's a And I'm like, what the hell happened? Like there somebody is has gone no contact and uh, good for them because I think that they deserve it. (laughs) We'll talk about that at another time. But there is a theory that the Primarchs are meant to resemble the Emperor's like pieces of his personality. They're pieces of the group. Might be like yeah and so you have like this guy who's like the magic one this one who really likes to debate people this one who is like they're all his toxic traits <laughs> well no toxic and and positive no i'm just kidding it was, yeah no but like it yeah it's like some the, of them are toxic traits though the, the, <laughs> do, don't get it twisted do one not them, get it like, twisted gets really attached to things very quickly yes um, oh no. yes oh no you're catching on <laughs> Do they represent, if there was seven of them, I would laugh. But oh, there's... the seven deadly sins? Yeah. No, no. I'm trying to think of things that there are 20 of. Oh, not much. Well. Questions, usually. See, you're so smart. Oh my God. <laughs> but that is the end of our first part discussing humanity. Oh. Any questions? Any elaboration you need on my part? Um... Do we know most of this via, like, documented first-hand accounts? There are a few books where people who are very close to the Emperor or the Emperor himself play, like, one of the main character roles. Typically, a lot of people point to a book called Master of Mankind to get, like, a lot of his perspective oh, on a like couple that, things. the family documentary or whatever. <laughs> a lot of it is... By first-hand accounts, I would say, yes. Like Erda, for example. Mm -hmm. How many of these immortal thingies are there? There's quite a few. Okay. It's typically a trait we see often in humans, not really. There's been a couple instances where there are, like, aliens that are perpetuals. For example, Makari was a perpetual, or is a perpetual, I guess. Gazkul's little friend. Okay. His banner waver, yeah. It's implied that he's a perpetual. But yeah, um, there's not like... So has anyone asked one of these things? Where'd y'all come from? I believe there may be an answer, but it seems to be kind of random. Me taking a test. I believe there may be an answer. <laughs> it, it's almost like a, a mutation, almost. Well, it, it, they like spring out of mushrooms. Maybe. There is only one Primarch who is a perpetual. Oh, there's a Primarch perpetual. There's only one. Now, is that because that was like, you know, genetically, like that was when they won the lottery with the breeding system and it like worked properly and that gene turned on Probably. that makes you a primal? Or was it like they dumped this kid in the river sticks or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my precious little Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking Chiron running away. What are you doing? <laughs> 
not supposed to put people in there. <laughs> Especially not babies. <laughs> the ancient water is not for baby. I would say it's just they won the lottery with that one. Okay, yeah. Because like, they yeah. all seem to be pretty different when it comes to like their skills and like. It's like looking at Tom Schwartz and his brothers when you're like, what? What happened? What happened? <laughs> What happened? Why are you wrong? <laughs> no, no, not wrong. Just different. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting because we'll go through a bunch of Primarchs who are like, this one is like pretty good at everything, but here's like his major flaw. Here's yeah. one who is really good at making documents and spreadsheets. Basically, we're going planet to planet. Okay. And if there's any weird freakazoid mutant babies that are like 12 feet tall, we found them. Do we know how long? Are they babies? Are they... They are babies. Okay. Are are they able to like do things? Um like are they going to survive if not found? That'll be a topic when we get to certain primarchs. Did our little buddies finish giving them the not a god now juice? Remember that? Yeah, the elixir that makes you mortal. What the hell was that? What was in that? The bottle? elixir that makes you mortal. Why wouldn't he just be putting Pink that in lemonade? There? Holy Why can you just make that? Because he can. He is pulling punches, I'll tell you. Now, Spider-Man over here. The first Primark. We're going to go in order to how they were found to give you like a better timeline. Right. So we're not just jumping all over the place of like, oh, we found so and so, but he already met blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah. You know, I feel like that would just be confusing. So we're going to go down the line. Okay. Do you want to guess who the first Primark may have been? Wait, am I supposed to know their names? Fair point. Um... Um, if you know a name, you can just guess blindly. I know the ninth one is the the one who's really vain. I don't know them by number. Huh. You don't know <laughs> Twinkle Hair. <laughs> what, what are you, a fucking tourist? <laughs> I sort them by name. <laughs> I sort the Primarchs by number. I sort them by name. <laughs> I saw them by color. Shut up. <laughs> um, They're having the prime of the <laughs> <argument again. laughs> uh, Um, uh, I really don't know that much about each of them individually. I, I know little things. I know things about some of their factions more so than I do about them. But like that one or two sense. of them, like I've watched a video where someone painted this model in a funny way or something. So like I've heard mm -hmm. bits of their story or Alex mm -hmm. has been like, look at this guy's weird shenanigans or like he's shown me a meme and I've asked, why is this funny? Like not in a condescending <laughs> way, but like, you know, I don't get it. Can Tell you like explain why? it to me so why I understand? And, and he'll, he'll, you, he'll do it. You, the emperor and, of and... mankind, <laughs> sitting on your throne as, like, Malkador is like, my emperor, look at this meme. Why is this funny? <laughs> well, it's like, I don't want to just not laugh. Why is this and funny? I'm not going to pretend to laugh. Like, Tell me why, Malkador. So I just, I want to, I want to understand the things he finds funny. So I think, so they're, you know. You're cute. You're cute. Now, I will tell you. Oh. The first Primarch that we will be discussing when we touch back with humanity. Jim? Is one by the name of Horus oh! Lupercal. Wait, okay, I know, okay, that one. Oh, I could, I, sh I knew that one. I didn't bring it up, it was a test. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really weird? The Emperor of Mankind lived with this wizard dude named Malkador and they oh, yeah. were like the best friends. They yeah, were like really, friends. really good buddies and they lived in like the same palace. Yeah, they're gay, right? But <laughs> Is that where you're going? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I knew that already. <laughs> What's a Primark? Oh, of course, Ems and Malkador are gay. What are you talking about? What do you about? think gene seed means? <laughs> That's not very feminine. <laughs> It's it's really it's really interesting because they're like Warhammer's for men. There's there's no gays here, and you look over and you're just like they lived in the same palace for thousands of years. Yeah, there's no separate bedroom in the palace. Maybe they sleep like bats on a rafter of the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> We're just assuming they use My beds. My emperor, it is the early morning. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> 
Why must the sun oh. exist? Oh no, we can put up creepy paper. Creepy <laughs> Get ready paper. for them to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh. Anything else, my love? I want the emperor played by the guy who plays Nandor. <laughs> <laughs> This is science, but this is a turtle. Where does the demon thing you two do come from? Demon, demon. I don't know. I think we just started saying it. Fun to say. It's fun to say. We are demon. 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 What Warhammer books do you recommend for people who are newish to the lore and love to read? Obviously, Infinite and the Divine is up there. I've been enjoying that. Dwarf one. Yeah, on the fantasy side, the Gotrek and Felix novels, starting with Troll Slayer, is very, very good. Yeah. You could do the Horus Heresy, but it's an investment. It's true. Although the audiobooks are great. I find any kind of voice work in, in Warhammer. It's oh, it's good. usually top notch. It's good. It's good stuff. Other recommendations, Brutal Cunning, Gaz Cool Thraka, Prophet of Dewa, and the Twice Dead King books on the 40k side of things. If you want an Age of Sigmar recommendation, I have just purchased Scourge of Fate, which is about a chaos warrior who wants to become part of the Varanguard, which is like the highest rank you can possibly get under Archaon. Oh. Yeah. I'm looking forward to reading that. That sounds cool. Alex says, Gaunt's Ghosts, more down to earth. Yeah, Gaunt's Ghosts I've heard is very, very good. Yeah. Commissioner Kane is a comedic down to earth one. Commissar Kane, hero of the Imperium. What did I say? Commissioner Kane. Commission. <laughs> Yo. Commission that Kane. <laughs> he also says the Night Lord trilogy is really good at yes. looking at chaos, but it's not about just people who are baby eating evil. Yeah. Yeah, those are all excellent recommendations. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. What a cutie he is. He's a cutie. Oh, he's a cutie. He's taller than both of us. Oh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a good grandfather? You've got bony knees. You came back in time to tell me that.